Hello and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. Today I'll be releasing another video about the DJI Spark. I will, very briefly, go through the app setup and share things that I experienced while doing that. I have some more videos coming of the flying, but I sort of got delayed because it has been raining here for around two weeks. And I also realized that I'm currently living in a no-fly zone, so all these factors have contributed to the delay. I think my perspective when it comes to using the Spark with a smartphone will be interesting to some of you because I don't own an iPhone, I have a Xiaomi Mi 5 that used to be Xiaomi's flagship smartphone until not long time ago. Chinese smartphones are very popular nowadays and I also think that my experience could apply to some Android users as well. In future videos that I'll be releasing very soon, I will be sharing several issues that I have faced uh, flying the Spark with these kind of smartphones and I hope it will serve as a warning to all the people out there. But anyways, let's very quickly go uh, to the app setup. Initially when I downloaded the app from the Xiaomi App Store here in China, the version of the app was outdated. So I could only select uh, all the drone models from DJI but not the Spark. I had to go uh, and get the version uh, the latest version from the Google's Play Store, which worked perfectly, except that because I'm here in China, I could not see the maps in the app, probably because these are Google Maps and most of the Google products, including the maps, are blocked here in China. From the start, I encountered some issues when trying to get the app. I was not able with this smartphone to scan the QR code on the box. As far as I know, this code should work with both Android and iOS devices, but there was really no way uh, to scan it. I tried in all conditions, with more light, less light, close up, you name it, it would not read the code. Now, you would think that there was an issue with my smartphone, but I have never experienced such a thing. I went as far as taking a photo of the QR code and zoom on it uh, on my DSLR camera's rear display, but it still would not scan it. I believe the issue is with the DJI Go 4 app because when I use another QR, uh, QR code scanner app, I was able to scan it, but it would only then uh, show me the device name and the Wi-Fi password. So I ended up, uh, what I ended up doing was basically turning on the drone. Then I opened the app and went to the right section where it says enter device. Now, let me point out that before doing that, you might need to select your drone in the app from the list of available models. To do that, just come here to the upper section and select Spark. So, as I was saying, after my smartphone failed to read the QR code on the app, I had to go here to the right where it says Enter Device. And once I clicked there, because my drone was not connected yet to my smartphone, uh, it took me to the Wi-Fi section of my mobile, where I had to wait a few seconds to see the Wi-Fi signal from the Spark. Once spotted, I entered the Wi-Fi password that can be found under the drone or on the box itself, right next to the QR code that I many times attempted to scan without success. Once connected, uh, we can continue with the setup and the app will ask you to agree uh, with the end user agreement. So you just need to check the tiny box on the screen and press agree to continue with the setup. At this point, the app will let you know that uh, you have one year warranty from the moment of activation. So if you're ready to face such a crude and imminent reality, press next. Otherwise, go outside, get some fresh air and try again. The next thing that you can do is name your aircraft. In my case, well, you know, I was lucky enough to get a blue spark because the name blue spark sounds really nice. And as we all know, a blue flame is an indicator of good combustion. So uh, I guess that you should avoid getting the yellow spark for obvious reasons. But if you made the mistake of naming your drone yellow spark, well, don't worry, you can change that later. The name is not permanent. By default, the Spark comes in mode 2, having the throttle and the yaw on the left stick and aileron and elevator on the right stick, but you can also select mode 1 and mode 3, which offer a different uh, virtual stick arrangement. By some reason, the default unit, uh, units in the Spark were Imperial units. I mean, come on DJI, this is the 21st century. And I mean no offense to American, uh, British or other nations out there using the Imperial system, but the metric system is just way better. Oh, I mean, maybe it's because I'm used to it, but I, I just think it's better. Those of you with little to no fly experience should certainly get started uh, flying in the so-called beginner's mode. By default, this mode is selected, so if you value your drone, 
keep it on and it will limit the flying range of the aircraft to a radius of 30 meters and an altitude of 30 meters. I'm sure many of you with little experience still will go, ah, I don't care about this, I'm a master, I don't need it, bye. But my advice is uh, keep it on and you might thank me later. I will personally not use it because I have been flying for quite some time, but otherwise I will certainly enable it, especially you know, considering that this is a almost $500 aircraft. So, I mean, you don't want to lose it or something like that. In this section, you can enable advanced gesture control that will allow you to control your aircraft using your hands. If you select to enable this mode, DJI will warn you about potential risks that you face when using it. I will follow their advice, especially when it comes to trying this mode in an open field with enough space. I mean, you don't really want your mini drone mistakenly flying into someone's property uh, if something goes wrong. So if you don't enable this mode uh, now, I mean, don't worry, you can always enable this mode later within the app. So, okay. I intend to cover the gesture mode with more details in coming videos. And it's really fun, actually, I can tell you that much. After you have completed the setup, the app will ask you to connect your smartphone to the internet via Wi-Fi. So you need to disconnect from the drone itself and connect once more to your router but the app still gives you uh, the option to select uh, if you want to use your mobile data if no Wi-Fi connections are available. If you run into some issues connecting through your router using the app's interface, minimize the app and go straight to the Wi-Fi section in your smartphone device to connect uh, to the router. Uh, then return to the app and press uh, activate. At this point, you can see that the, uh, the app is even requesting my phone number, so I will provide that as well. Hopefully it does not ask me for my shoe size in the next step, but well. After you have entered your phone number uh, and press enter, you will receive a verification code that uh, it can help you uh, confirm your number. Once the authenticity of your number has been confirmed, you can press activate and you'll get a message telling you that the account has been linked and will ask you to connect the aircraft to activate it. It is a bit annoying that you need to go out of the app to connect uh, to the aircraft and get back again in. Uh, once you get back, you will have successfully completed the activation process and you can proceed to update the aircraft firmware if necessary. Let's go ahead and proceed to do a firmware update. It's always nice to read all the firmware updates, uh, I mean, all that it offers. I already see a few interesting things here. But anyways, go over it uh, and try to figure out what uh, changes will be applied to the aircraft. Or take a screenshot to review it later. Perhaps it's possible to access an update log somewhere. I'll find out more about, uh, I'll find out, uh, about that a little bit later. Again, if you're connected to the drone, the app will ask you to switch to your Wi-Fi network. This switching between you know, uh, the app and, and your sort of Wi-Fi, the, the Wi-Fi section in your mobile gets a little bit annoying in the initial setup. It could be nice if you could switch between networks here within the app. Perhaps this is possible with you know, an iPhone or some other devices, but with my device, I cannot really do it. So I need to sort of exit the app and go to that section to do the changes. Um, but anyways, I hope it's not like that with all devices. The update will go on for quite some time, so you'll need to patiently wait. I would like to repeat that you should not be intimidated by the initial setup process as you just need to do this once. Once the update process has reached 99%, the app will inform you that your aircraft is disconnected and you need to connect it to finalize the update. So head to the Wi-Fi section in your mobile and connect this to the Spark. Once you do this, you can head back to the app and you will see a message telling you that the update has been completed and ask you to manually restart the aircraft. So we will go ahead and do that. Once you open the app again, you might be greeted with a message asking you to update your no-fly zone areas. In my case, the button was grayed out, perhaps because they already got updated, but it might be different in your case. After you're done with this step, you can pretty much open the app and you will see the FPV feed from the aircraft. Because I'm indoors, I'm getting no satellite connectivity here. 
and uh, you can see that there's a yellow warning sign that indicates uh, that the drone is also currently in altitude hold as it's not receiving any signal from the satellites around here as you can see we need to also perform a compass calibration that i will show you a little bit later if we move to the aircraft, I mean, if we move the aircraft from one side to the other, you will see that the image on the smartphone screen also moves as well, and there is no apparent lag. From this point on, the sequence you will use uh, if you wish to fly the drone using your smartphone is the following. You just turn on the Spark, then wait for its Wi-Fi signal to appear in the Wi-Fi section of your mobile, then connect uh, your smartphone to the Spark, and uh, head to the app and go to the section that says go fly. Of course we have over here the flight combo so we also need to connect the transmitter to our smartphone. Just like the Spark, the transmitter of the Spark has its own Wi-Fi network so the Spark and the transmitter can't both be connected to your smartphone at the same time. The way it would work is that you need to connect the transmitter to your smartphone's network first then proceed to power on the drone and then the drone will be connected to the transmitter. Let's then proceed to power on the transmitter to get started. I will also power on the drone. Once in the app, instead of going to the go fly uh, section, uh, I would rather press here where it says uh, connected with a signal icon. Then on the upper section, you will see that it says mobile device. And on the right, it says remote control. You need to go to the section that says remote control linking, which is the large blue uh, button at the bottom of the screen. Once you press uh, the bottom here on the app, it will tell you, just like I mentioned before, that you need uh, to basically connect your smartphone to the remote controller. So we need to disconnect it from the spark and connect it to the remote control. We can then go ahead to the Wi-Fi section of our smartphone and you will notice that among the list of Wi-Fi devices it says Spark RC and there are some other letters. That is the remote control or transmitter of the Spark. We will press connect and input the password. The password can be found uh, on the rear section of the remote control or RC transmitter, whatever you want to call it. So take a look there. Once uh, you connect to the RC uh, transmitter or remote control or whatever, you can come back to the app and if we move here to the front interface of the app, we will see that it now says on the left RC connected. This means that the transmitter is connected and we also see that we need to update the firmware of the transmitter. We need to go uh, through the same process that we went uh, through with the Spark and it takes some time. During the update process, the transmitter is going to be beeping the whole time and once completed, uh, the app will ask you to restart the transmitter. After restarting the transmitter, you will head once more to the transmitter linking section and press transmitter linking at the bottom of the page. Once you do this, the transmitter will start beeping and uh, the LED light uh, on the left will start blinking. You must then press the rear bottom of the spark for a few seconds and release it when you hear a beeping sound. Then wait a few more seconds until the beeping sound of the transmitter stops and the rear LED lights of the spark stop flashing fast and go red and green. At this point, you have successfully linked the transmitter with the drone and you can start flying using the transmitter. Let's try now to unlock the motors and see what happens. As you can see, the motors were successfully unlocked, so we know that the transmitter is working. You press, if you press the throttle stick a few seconds downwards, the motors will stop. Now regarding the smartphone holder in the transmitter, please note that there is an opening here for the center button in your smartphone. Now, not all smartphones are the same, but most smartphones nowadays have some sort of bottom here in the center and DJI has thought about this and there is a space here uh, in the holder so that the button does not get pressed as we insert the smartphone in the holder or transmitter. My advice is that you have some sort of on-screen control like a floating window like the iPhone has and other Android devices because you won't be able to easily access the controls of your smartphones in case you need to exit the app or do something else as the controller or transmitter holder is obstructing them. The interface of the app itself shows uh, important messages 
here on the left, uh, such as if we have GPS connectivity, whether there are some error messages and so on. I will cover this with more details later. It also shows the current flying mode, in this case altitude hold, satellite connectivity, type of connection, battery level. Then on the right side we have uh, the camera shutter and camera settings. Then uh, on the left side we will see automatic takeoff and landing functions, automatic return home functions, the gesture control and the virtual joysticks. At the bottom of the screen, you will see relevant information like altitude, distance and speed and so on. And there is an advanced menu here on the right uh, side, but I will cover that with more details in later videos, not to make this one too long. Those of you uh, that need to calibrate the compass of, the, of this aircraft, you probably need to do that initially. You just need to go to the advanced menu section and press here the section that says compass calibration. It is recommended that uh, you choose an area free of electromagnetic interference. Ideally, you would do it outside somewhere. Uh, but, you know, I'm just going to do it here to show you real quick. Uh, but if you have any issues doing it indoors, go ahead and go outside to some field or something where you are free of electromagnetic interference, such as, you know, smartphones, routers, all those kind of things that you may have in your house. So, OK, I think uh, this is enough for today. I hope this video will help uh, some of you get started with the Spark. If you find this info relevant in any ways, give me a thumbs up and drop me some comments. If you feel that I say something that it was not right or you have a different experience of how to do it, feel free to comment here in the comment section. I will definitely get back to you. And uh, I mean, we of course, we will all benefit from those comments. So don't hesitate and do that. And if you like the topic of drones, please uh, subscribe to my channel to get the latest news and reviews directly from China. I hope to see you all in my next video.